Good morning, Northwoods Online. My name's Hope. I am the online pastor here, and I have Jason with me. He is our Canton Campus pastor. We're so glad to have you here with us this morning. Yes. Hey, yeah. welcome to Northwoods. <laughs> yeah, we are kicking off a brand new series this weekend, and it is called looking for a sign it's going to be a great series you know there are so many seasons in life where we're you know really we say like god will you give me a sign you know you're looking for your next steps you're looking for what to do whether you know we have graduates coming up and so whatever season of life you're in you know this is going to help you um, just be able to navigate that with boldness and confidence knowing that god has a plan for you so i'm excited yeah. for it and there are decisions made like every single day like yeah. we had to decide what we were going to wear today like even those god cares about those he, <laughs> he, he wants does. to he wants to talk to you about those things as well yeah. so no matter what decisions you're making he is there and wants to be a part of it. Yep. And we want you to be a part of what's happening here at Northwoods yes, and getting do. connected. The connection card in our mm -hmm. app is a great way to find out what's happening here at Northwoods, yep. but also gets you connected with somebody that you can talk to. You can get prayer requests. Yeah. You can send comments in telling, hey, that message was great. Just send some encouragement to yeah. some of our pastors. They, they love to get that and they so need good. that because <laughs> that helps fuel us a little bit you know yeah. we, we like to hear what's what's happening and uh, we just want to be connected with you you can also yeah. get like i said get prayer in there yeah uh, there's so much happening in our northwoods app so download that app yeah. right now it's so good it's a great place to find you know upcoming events things you can get plugged in so so for sure download that if you don't have it and if you don't have it but maybe you're newer to northwoods you know if it's your first weekend your second weekend your third we're so glad that you are here and we would love to get connected with you. So yeah. another way that you can get connected if you're new is to text new to the number on your screen. And one of the cool things that I think Jason and I both love is that it will ask you, you know, which campus you're associated with. So if you're tuning in online and, and you want to get connected with me, you say that if you're at uh, Canton, yeah, you can. just say, hey, I love the Canton <laughs> campus and you'll get connected with me. Yeah, and so we can follow up with you. We can help you um, figure out your next steps. You know, I have met a lot of really awesome people through that. And so it's just it's just a great way to really get a personal contact, personal invitation to just talk with one of the pastors here at the church. Yeah, and speaking of personal, like if you are needing personal prayer mm -hmm. and you want to set up an, a prayer appointment, yeah. those are available to you as well. So just go to Northwoods dot church forward slash prayer yep and you can get all that information and set those appointments up we yeah. love getting with you and praying about whatever is happening yeah in life. absolutely and if you need prayer right now if you are joining us on Northwoods online or you're in the chat you can just drop your prayer request in the chat and we'll pray for you you know other people who are watching service with you can be praying with you in the chat or if you click on that request prayer button it will put you in direct contact with one of our prayer team members and we can just pray for whatever need is going on in your life. So we would love to pray with you. The team would love to pray with you. So if there's anything that you need, please, please, please do that this morning. And I think it's about time for us to yeah. join in with worship. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we're going to kick off with a song called Great Things because we do serve a God who can do so much greater than we could ever yes. ask or imagine. Amen. So let's get ready for worship.
every heart. You sing it out. Oh, I am standing on the Sing it again. I am standing. You know, that, that song reminds us of the truth in 1 John 4 that says perfect love casts out fear, that when we stand steadfast, rooted in perfect love, that we can walk fearless. And that perfect love, that, that same chapter actually defines it for us because that's important for us to know. It's not human love. We all know that human love has plenty of faults and failures, but God's love is steadfast. His love is perfect love. And I wanna just read two verses from that same chapter where the writer says, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. That is perfect love, my friends. That is how we can stay steadfast in in our everyday life, remain fearless, Yes, that our future is secure with him because of his perfect love, because he sent his son to take my place, to take your place, and to offer us forgiveness and salvation and freedom. And so we're gonna just end our time this morning together in in music with this song that's probably new to most of us. I love this powerful song. It's just a way to center our hearts again on that central truth that Jesus shed his blood on the cross for you and for me that it's his blood that that atones for our sin and that we have hope because of who he is. So Jesus, we lift you up in this place. We acknowledge that you died, that you rose again, and you are our savior. Thank you, Lord. I was a wretch. I remember who I was I was lost I was blind I was running out of time Sin separated The breach was far too wide But from the far side of the chasm You had me in your sight So you made a way Across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. There at the cross, you paid the debt I owed, broke my chains, freed my soul for the first time I had hope. Thank you, Jesus.
my place. You took my place, laid inside my tomb of sin. You were buried for three days, and then you walked right out again. Church, if you know this hymn, let's sing it together. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. There to my heart was the blood of There is so much power in your name. God, we thank you. Jesus, thank you for shedding your blood for us. Lord, that you adopted us and we can stand here with assurance of our place in heaven. Thank you for calling us sons and daughters. Lord, we pray that you would be here with us today, Lord, that you would open our ears to hear your word and open our hearts to receive what you have for us today. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would be here with us. Deliver your word to us. And Lord, help us to focus our eyes on you and you alone. It's in your name we pray, amen. amen. Well, you can go ahead and be seated. And good morning. My name is Janine, and we are so glad that you've joined us here today. Now, if this is your first time with us, we hope that you will find this place feels like home to you. We are so excited to have you. And for us, Sunday morning is so much more. Our church is so much more than just on Sunday mornings. And we want you to know that there is a perfect place for you here at Northwoods. And we would love to connect with you. So the best way to do that is to text NEW to the number on your screen. 833-550-1550. And later this week, one of our pastors will reach out to you. 
Well, this is the time where normally I would tell everyone else to get out your phones and go to the connection card, but I want you to wait a second, all right? We're gonna come back to that in just a moment. But first, with all the graduations going on right now, and I know there's a ton of them, we are so excited for our very first Northwood School of Ministry graduates. As a matter of fact, we're so excited that we wanna share the grander vision with you behind the school. So watch this. What was really impactful for us about the, the school ministry and the season um, that, that it happened, um, there, there were a couple important things. The first, the first one was just, uh, you know, kind of the idea of camaraderie. Like we went through with a, a group of other people who are passionate about Jesus and we were growing together. The other piece is obviously just the, um, the, the stamp that it puts on, on your life, on your uh, certification, on your ministry, you know, and, and obviously all of our qualifications at the end of the day come from God. But, uh, you know, having, having that um, degree that, that says, you know, I've put in the time, I've put in the work, I've put in the effort, and um, I've, been, I've been blessed to have this opportunity um, and other people see this in my life and can say and, and approve that, um, that I'm qualified in this area. Um, has been a, a huge blessing. So on this day where we celebrate uh, graduation, I just want to congratulate our students, our first graduates, but they really couldn't have gotten where they are today without Northwoods, without you, without your generous giving. It's what makes possible what we're doing. And these graduates now are making a difference and even more significant difference maybe than before. Again, we've planted our first church, so how fantastic is that? And that's largely because of your generosity. You're making a, a difference in the lives of our students, so thank you. The generosity, the time, the effort that's been put in is being funneled into advancing the kingdom. And it's not just about me, it's about who's next, who's God going to reach next, and how is he gonna use the gospel to shape someone else's eternity? Um, you know, so all that to say thank you. Thank you for uh, being faithful. Thank you for um, being uh, generous. Thank you for being uh, loving and focused on other people because that is the thing that is, is changing uh, the realities and the eternal destinations of people outside of these walls um, all over the country and all over the world. is so exciting to see so many men and women following God's calling on their life to serve his kingdom. If you'd like to learn more about the School of Ministry or learn how you can get involved, there is a table right outside here in the lobby, and there's some people there who can answer your questions and help you get connected to the school. Well, you know, we could never provide the Northwoods School of Ministry or the multitude of other ministries that are happening around Northwoods without your faithful and generous support. And we really do thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Now, there are several different simple and easy ways that you can give. You can go to our website, to northwoods.church give, or you can text give to 309-243-1550. Now, if you came here this morning with cash or check and you wanna give that somehow, you can do that simply by dropping it in one of our secure boxes located around the church. And of course, you can always drop it in the mail. Well, another incredible ministry that we have here at Northwoods that we would never be able to provide without your support is Discovery Land, our children's ministry. And I might be a little bit biased, but I think we have one incredible children's ministry. Yes, such an awesome ministry. And you know, it's so awesome that the Discovery Land team works hard to partner with parents and to help kids birth all the way through fourth grade to connect to Jesus. And one of the awesome things about Discovery Land that's so cool is most of the roles are volunteer. And a lot of those volunteers are just, they are giving out of their hearts, serving the whole school year. And as summer's coming along, a lot of those volunteers need to take vacations and honestly just rest up a little bit so they can get prepared for the fall so they can do it all again. So that's where you come in. 
We want to continue to provide an incredible children's ministry for all the kids here at Northwoods. But we need your help. In order to allow those volunteers to have that much needed break, we'd love to have you come alongside us, have fun and love on the kids. And we're not even asking you to do it the whole summer. If you can only serve one Sunday, we'd love to have you join us. And we've made it really, really simple. All you need to do is sign up and show up. You can't get any easier than that, right? So there's uh, several different ways that you can go about doing that. You can go to the website, to northwoods.church slash summer serve, or you can step out here after service. There's a table and there'll be some uh, people there who can answer questions and get you signed up. But here's a really cool part. You can do it right here in your seat. If you pull out your phone and you go to the Northwoods app, if you scroll a little bit, you're gonna see Discovery Land Summer Serve. And right under that is a little blue box and it says sign up to serve. You click that and you're ready to get going. Now remember when I said we're gonna come back to the connection card? Okay, now's the time when we're gonna go to the connection card and you should already have your phone out and you should already be in the Northwoods app, right? Because you were checking out the summer serve. So you're gonna go ahead and let us know you're here. And then on the second page, at the very top, it's gonna say Discovery Land Summer Serve. See, we're pounding that word into you, Discovery Land Summer Serve. And there's gonna be a little box there. Click on that box and it lets us know that you wanna get to serving. And I get all of those responses. So I wanna be so busy this week that I won't be able to do anything else but work on connecting with you and helping you get serving in Discovery Land. Well, you know what? Along with that app and all those great things, you can also find out all kinds of other information going on around Northwoods. You can find about, out about events and other opportunities. On that app, you can find out about all these announcements or you can go to our website news page to find out about it, or you can also get our weekly email news. There's tons of great ways to stay connected. So be sure you're plugged in so that you can stay connected to everything that's happening at Northwoods. With that, with that being said, we are excited to kick off a brand new series called Looking for a Sign. So let's get ready for what Pastor John has to share with us today. Well, good morning, Northwoods. Great to see everybody. Hope you're doing well as we kick off this brand new series this morning, looking for a sign. And uh, this weekend, we are celebrating graduates, anyone who's graduating high school, graduating college. And at the end of the service, I just want to let you know if you are a graduate, well, let me just show of hands. Is there anybody that's graduating high school, college in the room today? I see a couple over here. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, hey. So listen. If you're graduating high school, college, I wanna give you a heads up. At the end of the service, I'm gonna call you forward and we would just like to pray over you and then we have a book that we'd like to give you. So we'll do that um, at the end of the service. You know, as we, as we start today, I just wanna pray. Take a few moments and pray. You know, I know there's been so many times in my life, um, just throughout life, or even when I've been coming in here sometimes, where I just got junk going on in my mind and I can tell you, because I can remember vividly, there have been times where the Word of God just connects and it exposes a lie that I've hung on to for a long time. It's like it blows up a lie in my mind and it's, it's so freeing, it's liberating. And I just wanna pray, and let's just ask the Lord again that he would do that for us today. Amen, you know the Word of God is alive and active and so let's ask him to speak to us through his word, and so let's pray together, church. Lord, again, we thank you that your word is true and that your word exposes the lies that we sometimes have believed, and so Lord, I just pray that as we listen to your word today, that maybe there's been places where we have 
believed a lie for years, Lord, but in one moment, one word from you, Lord, I know can change everything and can blow up and expose lies that we may have believed. And so we ask for that today, Lord. I pray that your word would be so freeing and would just set us free today as we listen to it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You know, a while back, um, I came across a story uh, from a now defunct satirical Christian website. So there, this is a website that was similar to uh, like the Babylon Bee, if you've ever seen anything from the Babylon Bee before. Um, but one of the fictional stories they had was titled this. Man 91 dies waiting for the will of God. It says, Tupelo, Mississippi, Walter Houston, described by family members as a, as a devout Christian, died Monday after waiting 70 years for God to give him clear direction on what to do in life. He hung around the house and prayed a lot, but just never got that confirmation, his wife Ruby says. Sometimes he thought he had heard God's voice, but then he wouldn't be sure and he would start the process all over again. Houston, she says, never really figured out what his life was about, but he felt content to pray continuously about what the Lord might have for him. Whenever he was about to act, he would pull back because he didn't want to disappoint God in any way. He was very sensitive to always finding and remaining in God's will, and that was primary to him. Friends also seemed to like Walter, though he seemed not to capitalize on his talents. Walter had a number of skills he never got around to using, says longtime friend Timothy Burns. He worked very well with Wood and had a storyteller side to him. I always told him to take a risk and try something if you're not happy, but he was too afraid of letting the Lord down. Now again, it's a fictional story but one that illustrates the all too often truth that when it comes to God's will and decision making, I think many of us can sometimes suffer from analysis paralysis. We overanalyze, we overthink, and can ultimately become fearful of making a wrong decision. What if I make a wrong decision and thus we become paralyzed and unable to come to decision and thus don't move forward. And what makes matters worse, I think, when it comes to decision making, is that in this day and age, uh, like I said, when it comes to decision making, there are so many choices to choose from. It's a blessing and a curse. For example, uh, just this week, I, I went to the grocery store, just right over here, Schnooks. I went to the grocery store and I just started walking up and down the aisles and I snapped a few pictures as I was walking up down the aisles. Let me just show you the chip aisle real quick. All right, these are just Lay's chips, okay? So let me ask you, what kind of chips do you want? Classic, classic lightly salted, jalapeno cheddar, sour cream and onion, original barbecue, honey barbecue, hickory barbecue, sweet southern heat barbecue, how about summer BLT? Who in the world came up with that? Bacon, lettuce, tomato. Let's make it into a chip. <laughs> that sounds terrible. You want lime and sea salt? Kettle cooked, chili mango, jerk chicken, southern biscuits and gravy? What? Come on, make a decision. What chips you want? How about the deodorant aisle? Take a picture of the deodorant aisle. <clears throat> Do you want a gel, solid, or a spray? Antiperspirant or just deodorant? If you want antiperspirant, do you want clinical or just regular? <laughs> or would you rather go with the all natural stuff? It's made out of like dirt and leaves. <laughs> That's a risky game right there, you go with all natural stuff. All right, what, what scent do you want? After you figured out, you know, if you want antiperspirant, deodorant, what scent do you want? Let's just talk about Old Spice, okay? You can grab the Fiji scent, Aqua Reef, Canyon, Timber, Volcano, or if you're feeling adventurous, you can try Kraken Guard, Wolf Thorn, or Bear Glove. <laughs> Come on, make a decision. What kind of deodorant do you want? Barry Schwartz in his book, The Paradox of Choice, states that choices tend to produce paralysis instead of liberation. And the truth is we are faced with choices every day, lots of choices, not just, you know, what ships or deodorant do I pick, but choices like what should I do post high school? Like I said, we're, 
We're celebrating graduates today. Some of you just graduated high school. What next? Get a job? Go to college? If so, which one? What should I major in? Or should I just wait a few years and see if college becomes free? Some of you are, I'm, I'm being honest, some of you are graduating college. Again, what do I do next? Do I move back in with mom and dad? Get my own place? Grad school? Job? Where at? What, you know, what should I do? Other of us have questions like, you know, how do I know if he or she is the one? What method of schooling is best for my children? Should I keep them home? Private school? Public school? Is now the time to pursue a different career and step out and take a risk? So many different choices. And with so many choices, it's so easy to become paralyzed. And just like this series is titled, I think sometimes we say, God, I wish you would just make it easy and just give me a sign. Just give me a sign. Tell me what to do because I don't know what to do. And so in this series, we're gonna explore what the Bible teaches about God's guidance in our life. And I'm looking forward to this series because we're gonna unpack a lot over the next several weeks. But I think we need to start by answering this question and just kind of establishing a baseline for guidance. Should we expect God's guidance in our individual lives? Like, should we expect that he would guide us? Or is God just, you know, he's just concerned with the real high-level stuff going on in the world. I mean, there's lots of stuff going on. Is he, you know, is he just concerned with that? He doesn't really have time to really step down in my individual life, life and, and give me guidance. For example, I was listening to a Christian professor just this week teach on God's guidance. And he shared a, tour, a story about a time when he was in college and his, and his roommate in college was going to have a DTR type talk, to find the relationship with this girl that he had, you know, what, where are we at? Are we dating? Like, are we actually an item now or are we just friends? So his roommate goes to have this, to find the, you know, to find the relationship type talk. And the girl basically said, I don't wanna pursue dating and be something more than friends because I was praying last night about us dating and the Holy Spirit, I just sensed him saying no. Anybody ever had someone say that to him? You know, the girl just says, no, nah, God told me no. Now listen, I'm not denying that sometimes we use God as a trump card when we in fact have not heard from him. But I want you to listen what this professor went on to say about this. He said, do you really think the Holy Spirit took a break from converting souls, from pointing people to Jesus and glorifying the risen Christ and just for a moment decided to give this girl guidance on whether or not she should date my roommate? And his answer was no. In other words, don't expect God to get too involved in your daily life when it comes to guidance because he's got bigger fish to fry. But let's look at what the Bible says about guidance. And I'm gonna jump around here a little bit for just a few moments. So Psalm 23, one of the most, one of our favorite Psalms. Psalm 23, look at what it says. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Now we're gonna unpack that passage more Next, because we talk about what does it mean to be guided along the right path. But just understand, it says he leads and he guides. Psalm 25, verses eight through nine. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. Psalm 32. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Another scripture, Isaiah 48, verse 17. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. Let me give you one more. Look what the Apostle Paul wrote to the Christians in Rome. He said, for those who are led by the Spirit of God, 
are children of God. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Now this passage is important because the Greek word there used for led is the word ago. It's like, you know, Holy Spirit comes in and away we ago. Led, ago. And it speaks to the direct movement of an object from one position to another. I want you to listen to what one theologian said. I, I really enjoy this theologian, Wayne Grudem, had to say about that verb. He said, that verb ago is used 53 times in the New Testament. And in the overwhelming majority of cases, it refers again to the situation-specific directional guidance leading to a particular location or decision. Listen, I believe that the Bible is very clear. We can and we should expect God to give us guidance in our individual lives. It's well supported biblically and it's confirmed over and over again through the genuine experiences of Christ's followers and churches. Now again, in the coming weeks we'll talk more about what guidance look like, looks like and how he guides, guides us, but we first need to understand that guidance is a promise from God. It's a promise. And this promise should set us free from all kinds of what I'm gonna call limiting fears. We hold in regard to God guiding us. So what I wanna do with the rest of our time this morning is walk through some of these limiting fears, and I'm calling them limiting because fear holds us back and it limits our ability to walk with confidence and courage. And then for each one of these limiting fears, I wanna give you a liberating truth. So we're gonna talk about a limiting fear and then I want you to replace it with a liberating truth. So let's talk about how this promise of guidance sets us free from these limiting fears. So limiting fear number one is God only gives guidance to some people. God only gives guidance to some people. You know, it's easy to fall into the trap of believing that God only gives guidance to the Christian heroes, the Billy Grahams of the faith, the type of people who have made a mark on Christianity throughout the ages. These are the people, you know, they seem to be on fire and it's like, man, they got something extra that I don't have. And so we think, you know, it's foolish for me to expect that God would lead me like he's led others. I'm just not that important. And thus we hold on to this fear that God's guidance, it, it might not be for me. You know, there's a metaphor that's used all throughout the Bible of the shepherd and the sheep. The Bible likens Jesus to the good shepherd and his followers to his sheep. And in John chapter 10, Jesus goes into a dialogue with the Pharisees of the day about how he is the good shepherd. I want you to look at what he says. He says the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, speaking about himself, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. And when he has brought out all of his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. A couple of things I wanna point out here. If you've surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, you are one of his. You're one of his sheep. And it says, did you catch that? He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. Scholars tell us that ancient shepherds in the Middle East knew each of their sheep by name. Jesus says he calls his own sheep by name. It speaks to his individual dealings with those who are his. I want you to understand, Jesus doesn't just know the name of Billy Graham, Cal Rickner. He knows your name. You're one of his sheep. He knows the name of every one of his sheep, including your name. You're one of his own. And it says, he leads them out, and when he is brought out, all, not just some, all of his own, he goes ahead of them. He's gonna guide them. And his guidance is for all his sheep. And then it says his sheep follow him 
because they know his voice. Now, again, when we think about sheep, we, we probably tend to think in a very Western mindset that if you're going to, you know, you're going to go round up the sheep, you know, you go get the sheep dog and go, go round them up. The dog goes out and chases them. Uh, but shepherds in the Middle East, both now and in Jesus' day, they don't lead their flocks with a dog. They lead their flocks with their voice. They call and the sheep follow. You can watch videos of this on YouTube where they will call and the sheep will automatically follow because they know their shepherd's voice. Listen, God's guidance is for all of his sheep, not just some, it's, every, it's all of his sheep. He will guide, he will lead. And yes, it does take some experience and some time to learn and discern God's voice in our life. But listen, if you're struggling with this limiting fear that you know what, God only guides certain people, I want you to replace it with this liberating truth, liberating truth number one, God promises guidance for all of his people. Not just some, God promises guidance for all of his people. He knows your name, he'll guide you. It's not a possibility, not a probability, it's a promise. You can take that truth straight to the bank. So let me give you another limiting fear we need to replace. Limiting fear number two is this, I doubt my ability to figure out where God is guiding. In other words, we sometimes fall prey to the fear that even if I do believe that God wants to guide and will provide guidance to me, I just feel like I'm not smart enough, I won't be able to figure it out, I doubt my ability to understand him. I'm the type of person that, you know, I think, oh, I heard this, and I'm gonna go the wrong way. It's like we think of God's guidance as like this shoddy set of directions that comes with a kid's toy that needs assembly. Anybody ever got, got some of those? Reminds me of this past Christmas putting together presents and uh, we got this swing for our girls and the directions like are terrible. It's like they said, hey, it's a kid's toy, so let's let the kids write directions too. <laughs> it's literally like they said, here's the pieces, you figure it out on your own, don't call us. And sometimes we think of God like that toy manufacturer. You know, he'll give us a few pieces of the puzzle and then he just leaves us to our own to figure out how things fit together. It's like he says, hey, figure it out, don't call me. And if it ends up not working out, that's your fault. But let's understand again, when Jesus promises in John 10 that he will lead us, he's not just saying, I'm gonna give you information that you must decipher and figure out. He's promising the guidance of a shepherd, which means I'll be with you. I'm gonna look after you and I will see to it that you get where you need to be. In fact, the shepherd is the one who takes the initiative. It's not that we don't have any responsibility, but I want you to understand, guidance is, is the shepherd's responsibility. Yes, I have responsibility to follow, but it's not all on me. He takes the initiative to guide those who are open to his guidance. Again, not to say we don't have any responsibility because we do, and we'll talk about that later on, but the overwhelming evidence of the Bible portrays God as the one who takes the responsibility to guide us. And on top of that, he knows us, and therefore, he knows what we will need to get us where we need to go. Look at what Jesus says in another part of John 10. He said, I'm the good shepherd. I'm the good shepherd. And he says, I know my sheep. And my sheep know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay my life down for the sheep. I want you to hear him. He says, I know my sheep. Elsewhere in God's word it says he knows us completely. And because he knows us completely, he will guide us successfully. He knows you completely and he will guide you successfully. In other words, you are not on your own to figure things out. He will be with you and he knows how best to guide and to lead you. And so when it comes to God's guidance, if you're struggling with that limiting fear that I just won't be able to understand. 
and you won't be able to decipher it. I want you to replace it with this liberating truth number two. God knows me completely and will guide me successfully. God knows you completely and he will guide you successfully. He loves you, he knows you, he'll be with you and he will guide you in a way that you can understand. Let me give you another limiting fear we sometimes deal with. Limiting fear number three, my own sinfulness will keep me from receiving God's guidance. This is one that a lot of us struggle with. My own sinfulness is gonna keep God from guiding me. It's like he's gonna reject me. And while it's true, hear me, it's true that sin is a deviation from God's perfect standard and that sin can cause us to miss out on some of the blessings we had known, we would have known if we had been walking closer with Jesus. We need to understand that if the disposition of our heart is to follow Jesus and to please him, a misstep into sin is not going to cause him to reject us and say, oh, no, I'm not guiding you anymore. No. It's like we view ourselves, you know, as, as kind of this tightrope walker, like, you know, I'm just kind of walking here, who I'm trying to follow God, I'm trying to get to the other side, but man, if I take one wrong step, I'm gonna fall out of it. I'm gonna fall out and I'm sunk. One wrong step, I'm done. Not gonna guide me anymore. And his plan will be forever lost. But again, let's, let's remember the incredible analogy of the sheep and the good shepherd. It's been said that almost more than any other class of livestock, sheep require endless attention and meticulous care. It's also true that sheep are not always the smartest of animals. And I'll show you what I mean. There was just recently a video that made its rounds on the internet of the sheep that was stuck in a ditch. And I'm gonna show you this to you in a second. Uh, but just know, on this video, they're talking in Russian. I have no idea what they're saying. <laughs> but watch the video, because it's kind of funny. А боже, отойди. Нет. Какой он маленький, я сам тебе. Потяни сейчас, У! сам. Потяни. Вверх потяни. Ой, умничка, Риад, умничка. Ногу не сломай только ему. У! Умничка, умничка. За обе ноги. Молодец, <laughs> oh. Right back in the ditch. And isn't that a picture of us sometimes? It's like we fall right back into the ditch we just got out of. But here's what I want you to understand. Not only does Jesus give us the power to stay out of the ditch. We don't have to keep falling into the ditch over and over and over and over again in our lives. It's like, oh, the ditch is just where I'm gonna be. God gives us the power, he sets us free from that. But I want you to understand, if a regular shepherd guides his sheep in spite of their waywardness, how much more the good shepherd? He guides in spite of our waywardness. In fact, he has made provision for our waywardness. Look at another passage that includes sheep in Isaiah 53. I love how the New Living Translation puts it in verse six when it says, all of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We've jumped back in the ditch. We've left God's path to follow our own. Yet, the Lord laid on him, speaking of Jesus, the sins of us all. On the cross, our sin was placed on Jesus and he paid the price for it. He paid the price for every sin committed, past, present, and future. You understand that, that God has already made provision for sins you haven't even committed yet. He's already made provision for them. They're already paid for. So understand if you struggle with this limiting fear 
that my waywardness is gonna keep God from guiding me. I want you to replace it with this liberating truth. God has made provision for my sin and will guide in spite of my waywardness. Now again, let me qualify that by saying if the disposition of your heart is to follow God and to please him, understand that if we step into sin but then confess of it, confess it and repent of it, we're not gonna miss out on where God is leading. You, you can let that fear go. God's gonna guide me. He's already made provision for my sin, even the ones I haven't committed yet. He's gonna guide me. Let me give you one last limiting fear, and I know I've been here before. One wrong choice could cause me to fall out of God's plan for my life. So sometimes we think, we can fall out of his plan through sin. Other times we think that just a wrong choice, even if it's not sinful, can cause us to miss or fall out of his plan because we mistakenly think sometimes, well, there's only one way to arrive at where God is leading. For example, we're celebrating graduates today. So let's, let's say you're a graduating high school senior today. And you're looking at college and you got about four different options on the table of places that are good options and, and you could probably choose any of them. Some might be led to think that only one is going to get you where God is leading and the others will not. So we end up worrying ourselves sick because we think only one's right. What if I make the wrong decision? And if I make the wrong decision, I'm gonna miss God's plan for my life. I gotta, I gotta hit this decision just right because if I don't, I've missed it. Can I just take the pressure off and remind you that we serve a big God? He's a big God and he's big enough to accomplish his purposes in more than one way. He's big enough to accomplish his, his purposes through your choices. And we'll talk about this more later in this series, how God will work even through our desires. But just know, you can trust you're not gonna fall out of God's will because of one choice. In fact, if you've, if you've submitted the decision-making process to him, you can trust that when you make the decision, he's in it. He'll be in it. You know, in my own life, I was thinking about this this week, in my own life, I know that God has called me to help lead his church. I didn't always know that that would be here at Northwoods. I always was like, man, I'd love to carry on somehow at Northwoods. I didn't know that wasn't my decision. But I know that God has called me to lead, help lead his church. This is a part of what he's called me to do in this next season of my life. But if you were to look at what he's called me to do and then try to reverse engineer what you think would need to happen for me to be in a position to fulfill this calling, you would think, well, this needs to happen, this probably needs to happen, this needs to happen. All these things you would think probably need to happen to end up in a position to, to fulfill where God's, what God's called me to do. And I was talking with a friend the other day and he said, you know, you've probably known your whole life, haven't you, that you wanna be a pastor? I said, no, <laughs> actually I haven't. You know, when I went to college, I didn't go with the mindset that, hey, I wanna go into ministry. I went to college because I said, okay, here's a place I can play basketball, and I guess if I have to major in something, I should be a radio broadcaster. I wanted to be on ESPN and, you know, and call basketball games and stuff. Then I, freshman year comes, I go into the, the, you know, the School of Communication, and I find out that, hey, if you wanna make it like big in radio broadcasting, and being an ESPN, you have to like start working like the night shift, man. Like you gotta work in really small towns, you gotta be moving around, working your way up. And I was like, man, I don't wanna be, I don't wanna be moving all over the place my whole life. And so I was like, ah, you know, forget that. I don't wanna be a radio broadcaster. So I said, you know what, I wanna be a basketball coach. And since every basketball coach I had growing up, almost everyone was a history teacher, I said, <laughs> guess I should major in history. <laughs> Not because I like history, just because this is a means to an end. And in the last semester of college, I started my student teaching experience at Stevens County High School in Toccoa, Georgia. And this high school was, had more students than they had room for. 
So they had double wide trailers out in the parking lot for classrooms. And I got put with a guy named Mr. Prather, he's a great teacher, out in a double wide trailer in the parking lot. And during that semester, maybe he realized I didn't know a lot about history, uh, he started saying, whenever a kid would act up, and there'd be many times this would happen, he'd basically kick him out of the trailer and say, John, take him outside and talk to him. Go outside in the steps and talk to this troubled kid, right? He's acting up in my class. Get out there on the steps. So I'd walk out on the steps of that trailer. And on the steps of that trailer, I listened to the stories of several students. And I began to recognize how many of their stories included broken homes, abuse, hurt. As I'm listening, I started thinking, you know, someone needs to teach them history. But someone needs to share with these students that Jesus loves them, can save their soul, and can redeem their story. And that's what my heart beats for. And that was the beginning of why and why I chose to begin pursuing ministry. Now, was that the path you would think that someone who wants to be a pastor should have traditionally taken? Probably not. But did God work through those choices to accomplish his purpose? Absolutely. And it's not because I'm special. It's not because I'm better. It's because that's what God does. I want you to look at what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him. And he will make your paths straight. In other words, if you're trusting in the Lord you're, and with all of your heart, you're leaning on him and submitted to him, then you can trust when you step out and make the decision, he's going to make the path straight. And he's going to get you where you need to go. You don't have to be fearful that I don't know about one of these, well, I'll make this decision here. No. If you've submitted to the Lord, he's going to make the path straight. You can trust that. So if you feel that limiting fear, one wrong choice gonna cause me to fall out, I want you to replace it with this liberating truth. God will work through my choices to accomplish his purpose. And again, let's be clear, I'm not saying do whatever you want and it'll all work out. Our choices do have consequences, but I'm saying if you're submitted to the Lord and your desire is to please him with your choices, then you can trust that he's gonna work through your choices to accomplish his purpose. Isn't he a good God? Amen. He is a good God. Give him praise. Yeah. Now, I could go on, but we need to celebrate a few graduates here. So, um, you heard about the School of Ministry yeah. at the beginning. And church, this has been a part of, started a few years back, and this has been a part of our vision. You know, our vision is to see 20 churches planted locally by 2030 and to see every chair represent a church. That's why you see those gold plaques in the backs of chairs. Those are churches planted around the world. And the school of ministry is, is, is a part of that. It's helping to equip and raise up people to step into ministry. And so we want to celebrate our very first five graduates through the Northwood School of Ministry. We're going to put their picture up here today. Um, if you guys have that. Yeah, so there are our very first five graduates. We can celebrate them. Yep. On the very left, that's Tanner Smith. He's planted our very first church plant up near the Quad Cities, Pathway Church. Then the next you see is Kayla Hallstrom. She works with me in Student Life. Uh, then the middle is Eli Kaler. He works here at Northwoods. Dan Marlin, he's a part of our Galesburg campus that will be launching as a new church plant. And then that is Ben Fifield who helps lead our IT department here. And they have gone through and they have completed and they have graduated the Northwood School of Ministry, our first five graduates. It's gonna be many more. So we celebrate them today and we're thankful what God is doing through the School of Ministry. And, and I just wanna say, listen, if you, if you are here and you've ever had an inkling like, you know what, ministry, you know, I. There's just something in my heart that beats for that. Listen, I don't want to manipulate you and just say, well, that's God calling you, so go out there and sign up. But I do want to say, listen, 
If you have that inkling in your heart and you say, I wanna explore more about that, I would encourage you, we have a table in the lobby, I would encourage you to stop by the table and just ask some questions. Learn about it and say, you know what, is this something that I wanna pursue? Again, if you have that desire in your heart, sometimes if, you're, right, if your desire is to follow the Lord and please him, many times the desire in your heart is from the Lord. And so I wanna encourage you, if you have that desire, to stop by the table in the lobby and check out our Northwood School of Ministry and just lean in and say, you know what, is this some, maybe this is something God's calling me to do, is to prepare and be, be equipped for ministry. So if that's you, Northwood School of Ministry, there's a table out there. Now, we wanna celebrate those who are graduating high school and college, and I said I was gonna call you down, so if you are a graduating high school or college here shortly or just having the last week or so, I want you to come on down front and we wanna pray over you. We'll send a hand and pray for you. So come on down front. Let's give them a hand as they come down front. There he is. You guys just come on right over here. Hey, Kaylee. What's up, guys? Proud of you guys. Proud of you. Thanks for coming down, guys. We wanna just pray over you today and let you know that we are so proud of you and we're standing with you and wanna encourage you again to keep your eyes on the Lord. Trust in him and again, lean on him with all your heart and he's gonna make the path ahead of you straight. And so I wanna pray this prayer over you. It's a prayer that the Apostle Paul prayed in church. Why don't you just go ahead and stand and uh, if you feel comfortable, you can just extend a hand in agreement. In Colossians, the Apostle Paul prayed this, and I just wanna pray this over you. In, in church, we're, we're gonna pray this over you. In Colossians 1.9, it says this, and this is our prayer for each of you. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And so Lord, again, we just speak that over these graduates this weekend. Lord, I pray you would make their paths straight. I pray they would know your power in their lives. And Lord, I pray that as our culture Sometimes it feels like it's getting a little bit darker and they feel the pressure against them of and who am I gonna stand for? Am I gonna stand for Jesus? Lord, I pray that pressure would not drive them away but that would drive them to you and that they would have their own experiences, not just their parents, not just hear stories in this church but they would have their own experiences of your provision and your power in their life. Lord, we ask for that. We pray over them. I pray you give them the power to stand, Lord, to stand strong. We pray your blessing over them. It's in Jesus' name we pray and everybody said amen, amen. amen. Give it up for these graduates. We love you guys. So hey, we are dismissed. Graduates, go ahead and grab a book. You grab a book, take that with you as a gift. And uh, guys, have a great, great week. We'll see you next week. Northwood's online again. Like I always say, it's great to have you tuning in with us. And I wanna let you know, if you're a graduate who wasn't able to be here today, we would still like for you to have this book. Uh, and so I'll just encourage you, we'll have the books available if you wanna drive out, if you're near us and wanna drive out one of our campuses this week, you can pick up that book. We would love for you to have it and just know that we have been praying for you and just praying blessing over you. Have a great week. We are so glad you joined us this weekend and I hope that you're able to walk away from this message today understanding the why yeah. behind being able to trust God, right? And not only that, but he's going to guide you mm -hmm. and when you let him guide you, 
you can be released from common fears that could hold you back from doing some yeah. things. It's so good. You know, it makes me so excited for the rest of the series. This is just the beginning. Yes. We have several more weeks to just really dive in on, on what it means to get guidance and God's promise in that. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to that and we hope that you'll keep joining us. But right now, you know, after every service, we have altar prayer on all of our campuses and we have that right here online too. So if you need prayer for anything, go ahead and click that request prayer button and one of our team members would love to pray with you. And another place where you can just get connected throughout the week is in our Facebook group. That's a place where we're praying for each other for needs that we have. You know, I'll keep you in the loop on things that are coming up and, and ways that you can just stay engaged, you know, maybe talk about the message throughout the week or whatever it might be. So we would love to see you in the Northwoods online Facebook group. And we'd also love to see you back here yes, next absolutely. weekend. Have a great week. Be blessed.